Hello, and welcome to the Charlian Forum. My name is Chris, and now that patch 7.05 has landed, I wanted to jump back into my job guides for Final Fantasy XIV's newest expansion, Dawn Trail. And what better way to start than with the newest melee DPS, Viper. Before we get started, please remember to slither on over to the subscribe button and reawaken your friends by liking this video and sharing it with them. With those admittedly terrible puns out of the way, let's get into it. First up, we're going to discuss the very basics of Viper. The job's weapon of choice is dual swords, which can be combined into a dual blade type weapon for more powerful attacks. Viper is a very busy job that keeps its foot on the gas at all times, demanding a pretty good amount of awareness for your resources and the ability to keep up with a lot of OGCDs in the kit. Examining the job gauge of Viper and how it's related to its abilities can be a little bit of a mess. My advice here is to basically ignore the segmented glow of the blades, and instead focus only on the outline glow that will show up on either side. By placing steel fangs to the left and reaving fangs to the right on your hotbar, the job gauge will always blink on whichever side is the quote-unquote correct option for you to press, making looking at your bar no longer necessary. By focusing on which side is illuminated, you'll be able to hit either the left or right button and correspond directly with the gauge. If both sides are blinking, it just means that you can choose whichever one you'd like to hit. The blue bar in your UI will track your serpent's offering, and the diamonds will represent your stacks of rattling coils. I'll discuss both of these resources in later sections. Starting with our basic combo, these exists on two hotkey buttons. Each branch will begin with either steel fangs or reaving fangs. These two openers have an additional effect of granting either honed steel or honed reavers, buffs that will increase the potency of whichever opener you did not use the next time around. Make sure that you just alternate between these openers to utilize this increased potency. After using one of these openers, both buttons will transform into the second step of the combo. Steel Fangs will transform into Hunter's Sting, and Reaving Fangs will transform into Swiftskin's Sting. Hunter's Sting will grant the Hunter's Instinct buff, increasing your damage by 10% for 40 seconds, while Swiftskin's Sting will grant the Swift Scaled buff, granting a 15% haste for 40 seconds. Either of these combo actions can be used after either of the openers, so just use whichever one would refresh your lowest time remaining buff, or really just hit whichever one is glowing. The game tracks this for you and will always recommend the one that would refresh the buff that's closest to expiring. After executing a sting action, the buttons will transform into two of four possible options. Executing Hunter's Sting will transform the buttons into Flank Sting Strike and Flank's Bane Fang, while executing Swift Skin Sting will transform the buttons into Hind Sting Strike and Hind's Bane Fang. As you can probably guess, these finishers have additional potency based on landing them from the flank or rear respectively. To easily remember which is which, green icons are flanks, red icons are rear. Additionally, each of these finishers will grant a Venom buff, which will increase the potency of another finisher of the four. As an example, executing Flank Sting Strike will grant the Hind Stung Venom effect, increasing the potency of Hind Sting Strike. This will encourage you to cycle through your combos and finishers to ensure that you're utilizing all of the increased potency effects, and also keeping your two buffs refreshed at all times. Executing any of the four finishers will grant 10 Serpent's Offering Gauge, which again, I'll talk about at a later time. Additionally, after executing any of these finishers, Serpent's Tail, an OGCD button, will transform into Death Rattle, a skill that should be hit after each combo. Our single target dual blade combo starts with Vice Winder, which holds two stacks, each with a recharge time of 40 seconds. Vice Winder shares a recharge time and stack counter with its AoE variant, Vice Pit, which I'll discuss in the AoE section. Executing Vice Winder will allow the execution of two follow-up attacks, Hunter's Coil and Swift Skin's Coil. As the name implies, these skills will refresh their associated buffs. After executing either of these skills, Twin Fang and Twin Blood will transform into two new OGCD abilities, Twin Fang Bite and Twin Blood Bite. These abilities will have their potencies increased by a buff granted by Hunter's Coil and Swift Skin's Coil but the order that you use them in will depend on which coil you use first. For example, if using Hunter's Coil first, you'll press Twin Fang Bite and then Twin Blood Bite, while doing the opposite after executing Swift Skin's Coil. 
Keep in mind that Hunter's Coil has a flank positional, while Swiftskin's Coil has a rear positional, each granting increased potency. For AoE basic combos, we have a very similar setup to our single target combos. Two buttons that transform based on your inputs. Steel Maul and Reaving Maul, which will buff each other just like the single target skills, will transform into Hunter's Bite and Swiftskin's Bite, which will refresh your buffs, and transform into Jagged Maul and Bloodied Maul, which buff each other after use. Executing either of these finishers will also grant 10 Serpent's Offering. Just like our single target combo, after executing either of these finishers, Serpent's Tail will transform into an OGCD, an AoE version this time, called Last Lash. Be sure to hit this before starting your combo back up. To make this simple, you'll alternate openers, use whichever bite refreshes your timer, and alternate finishers, and hit your OGCD between combos. Again, just follow the glowing buttons. Your AoE dual blade combo starts with the aforementioned Vice Pit, which will allow the execution of Hunter's Den and Swift Skin's Den. These also allow the use of buffed OGCDs, Twin Fang Thresh, and Twin Blood Thresh. The flow here is exactly the same as your single target combo, just AoE. As a quick note, the recast timer of all of your dual blade attacks is slightly longer than your dual wield combos, which gives you a little bit of extra room to double weave these OGCDs during this section of your rotation. Vice Winder and Vice Pit, our dual blade combos, will also grant a stack of our resource known as Rattling Coils, the diamond on your job gauge that stacks up to a maximum of three. This resource allows us to execute Uncoiled Fury, a ranged GCD that consumes one Rattling Coil per execution and deals very high AoE damage. Additionally, executing Uncoiled Fury will transform Twin Blood and Twin Fang into two new OGCDs to follow its execution. Uncoiled Twin Blood and Uncoiled Twin Fang, both of which are also ranged AoE skills. Similar to the other OGCDs, these will be buffed in a specific order following Uncoiled Fury, but they will be the same order every time, so be sure to hit these in the correct order to maximize your damage. Be sure to keep at least one stack of this resource on hand for movement, but be careful not to overcap it because it can be really easy to lose track of. For other skills and abilities, Viper has access to a spammable ranged filler attack called Writhing Snap, a simple skill to utilize for disengaging from the target, and the movement skill Slither, which can be used to instantly travel to either an enemy or a party member. This holds three stacks and recharges with a time of 30 seconds. Our two minute ability is called Serpent's Ire, which will grant us the ready to reawaken buff and, as mentioned before, a rattling coil. Viper has no raid-wide or party utility skills. It doesn't even have a personal defensive, so keep in mind that your responsibility when playing the job is to deal as much damage as possible and to utilize as much as you can in the buff windows that your party gives you. And with that, let's talk about Viper's signature skill, Reawaken. Activating Reawaken requires either 50 Serpent's Offering or the Ready to Reawaken buff, which is granted by Serpent's Ire. Serpent's Offering is a resource that's built from executing any of our basic combo finishers as well as Hunter's Coil, Swiftskin's Coil, Hunter's Den, and Swiftskin's Den. Upon activation, Reawaken will deal massive damage to all nearby enemies, as well as generating five Anguine Tributes, a resource that will transform various abilities on our bar into new skills. Please note that the buff that grants these five stacks of Anguine Tribute only lasts for 30 seconds, so if for some reason you don't execute all of the skills within that window, you will lose this buff and any stacks you have will be lost, transforming the skills back to their normal state. Steel Fangs, Reaving Fangs, Hunter's Coil, and Swift Skin's Coil will all transform into 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th generations respectively. Executing each of these abilities will consume one stack of Anguine Tribute and additionally buff the next generation in line. Reawaken itself will transform into Ouroboros, a powerful finisher that will end Reawaken upon execution regardless of how many Anguine Tribute stacks you have, so make sure to hit this button last. Additionally, Serpent's Tail will transform into an OGCD skill that can be used between each generation, 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th Legacy. You'll want to be sure to hit this button between each of the GCDs in your generation line. 
all of the skills under Reawaken have a shorter GCD than our standard kit and are affected by our haste buff, so you're going to be moving through these skills very quickly. Just stay focused and make sure that you hit the buttons in the right order for maximum damage. I like to have them lined up on my bar in order to help with execution, but your mileage may vary based on what keybinds work best for you there. Additionally, all AoE versions of the transform skills will also transform, which is giving you a lot of options for how you press these buttons going into this rather intense window of burst damage. The opener for Viper is relatively simple, and its rotation actually follows more of a priority system than a rigid rotation of skills. For the opener, we're going to start the fight with either Steel Fangs or Reaving Fangs. You'll weave Serpent's Ire, followed by Swift Skin Sting to get our haste buff up. We'll then use Vice Winder, weave a potion if you're raiding, followed by Hunter's Coil to get our damage buff up, double weave our bites, Swift Skin's Coil, double weave bites, and enter Reawaken. Hit your nine part combo, then use your basic combo finisher, either can be used here and weave Death Rattle. Drop an Uncoiled Fury, weave your OGCDs, followed by another Uncoiled Fury combo. Then Vice Winder, Uncoiled Fury combo, Hunter's Coil combo, and Swift Skin's Coil combo. For your rotation, you basically just want to go through your combos, alternating finishers and openers to consume your potency upgrades and keep your buffs refreshed. Make sure you weave all of your OGCDs and use your Vice Winder stacks on cooldown. Throw Uncoiled Furies whenever you're about to cap, but make sure you hold on to one stack for movement when necessary. Reawaken once every odd minute and twice every even minute with Serpent's Ire. There's some additional optimization possible here, obviously, but I only like to cover the basics in these videos. It sounds super complicated, but really only because Viper just has a ton of OGCD abilities to weave, which attributes to the overall all gas, no brakes feeling of the job. I really like the speed this job moves at, so I'm glad to see that it's been very popular with the players by and large. As always, the link to the Balance Discord server is below, which is chock full of amazing resources to help you improve your play. And with that, I've wrapped up my guide to Viper. Do you enjoy this job's frenetic pace, or is it too much for you? Let me know in the comments below, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.